So everybody knows you inherit your physical DNA, right? The thoughts, feelings, actions, reactions, all of those. And those are your emotional DNA. And part of your emotional DNA is your money DNA. So you inherit a lot of your thoughts about money, the way you act around it, the way you interact with it, whether it's a friend, whether it's a foe. That's not just you. That comes from somewhere. And it's usually from a person and an event. That's your money DNA. Welcome. Hey, today I'm excited. We're going to be talking about the money mindset. My guest today literally helps individuals overcome financial obstacles, transform their money mindset, achieve financial success. She calls it activating our money DNA. DNA. My guest today, Judy Wilkins-Smith. She works with Fortune 500 executives. Judy, welcome to the show. It is lovely to be with you today. All right, well, let's dive into this. What is this thing that you call money DNA? Okay, so everybody knows you inherit your physical DNA, right? Yes. Most people don't realize that you also inherit your patterns of thoughts, feelings, actions, reactions, all of those. And those are your emotional DNA. And part of your emotional DNA is your money DNA. So you inherit a lot of your thoughts about money, the way you act around it, the way you interact with it, whether it's a friend, whether it's a foe, that's not just you, that comes from somewhere. And it's usually from a person and an event. That's your money DNA. To me, that makes total sense, right? Because before we become aware of our thoughts, and for everybody, this is different. We have years of programming, like you said, from our parents, our environment, our peers, I would say most people have a negative money mindset. Absolutely. And it is the, the quote usually is love of money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. Lust of money. Yes, maybe. maybe. And I think we give it too much. But poor money is made an or all the time. O-R. It's never an and. And it's only when you start to make it an and that it, you can make it a friend. So make it an or. I have people who come to me all the time and they say, you know what? I really, really want to become wealthy. So I say, okay, tell me about wealthy people. Oh, they lie, they cheat, they steal, they're disgusting. And I go, so, okay, so you want to become a liar, a thief, a disgusting person? And they go, no, 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 no. So why do you think you're going to do it differently? <laughs> if that's your thought and if that's your mindset, every time money tries to come play with you, you're going to find a reason to throw it away, push it away, drive it away, wish it away, or, or, You'll make a whole bunch of it, and I have clients like that, and they either don't know what to do with it, they feel guilty about it, they yes, hide yes. it, they give it away. And I'm going, you've spent all this time trying to be, make friends with money, you didn't know it, but, and then what did you do? You turned around and went, uh-oh, God's going to smite me with a piece of two by four. No, no. Yes, it, it, it's incredible <laughs> because... Again, part of that money DNA, when you think about what happens, let's say a school environment, we are told to get a big uh, degree so we can get a big uh, job, so we can get the big house. But on the other side, right, uh, rich people are portrayed horribly, not only uh, just uh, historically, but even in today's media. You look at, uh, you know, since we're in the holidays, Scrooge, perfect example of, of a wealthy mean person uh later on has a change of heart but for the most part he's, a lot of wealthy people are portrayed as these horrible individuals oh uh, and you know what before i proceed i will say even politicians wealthy politicians like to play this game uh oh, yeah. you know you know Ber bernie sanders to me is a great example uh he's a pretty wealthy guy but yet he likes to pretend that he's not and he'll he he does like to say hey you know, we have to distribute the wealth. And he talks about uh, the haves and haves not. Even though he has quite a bit, he likes to pretend that he doesn't because it sells good. How do we as a society, well, let's not talk about society. How, is, how do I, how do we start overcoming our money DNA? So there are a lot of things with money. The first thing is money wants to be a friend. It's a good friend. It's a good friend. It's a great mentor. It's a good disciplinarian. It's a very wise flow. Now, here's the other thing. People don't realize that money is spiritual flow. 
there are levels of money. So you, your awareness of money is level one. Uh, and then you go all the way to level nine. But you're becoming aware of money as a level one. And then we have, um, you have your survival, you have your relationships, transactional relationships, expertise. And then all of a sudden something happens and you go, hold on a minute. It might actually be okay for me to want money. What an idea. I mean, this may not be a bad thing. Hmm. And that's when we start to think a little differently. And then we look at it and we go, okay, so what, am I, what do I want to do with this money? Is it okay for me to have the home, have the car? Well, humanity is geared to evolve through wants. That's how we grow. I want to walk. I want to move. I want to love. I, that's how we grow. And we forget that. And money is simply a, a flow, a means of flow. Once we begin to understand that it's a really good friend and that there's plenty that we can do with it for ourselves, for our communities, it becomes spiritual flow, which is what it was always intended to be. So it's because we're playing in the minor leagues all the time, because we've been taught to play in the minor leagues, that money gets such a bad rap. I wish we would all just quit and, and stop saying it's not about the money. Yeah, it's about the money, people, but it's also about what you can do with it it's about the expansion you can create. I don't know who the guy was, and I'm going to paraphrase him a little bit, but there was somebody who came out recently and, and who said, wouldn't it be amazing if we were taught from very young that money mediates flow and wisdom and growth and that people who have it are, are not genetically deficient. They've gone in search of a way to expand humanity. I love that. I, it is a great quote. Yes. You know what? And, and, and when you think about it, there is uh, something that you said earlier, you want money. Great. What do you want it for? Or something along those lines. And I think that that's important because if you want to help your community, you're going to need money. If you want to help your family, you're going to need money. Uh, and, and I love what you said also about that money is a great disciplinarian and it can be a great friend. But bottom line is we live in an abundance, I believe that we live in a, an abundance world and money is just one of the things that we can have abundance in, just like we can have abundance in health, we can have abundance in, in relationships, we can have abundance in, in, in different areas. Unfortunately, most of us have been crippled by our loving family and friends and the media and stuff like that. Uh, and it's it's interesting. So let me ask you this, if somebody is struggling, Let's say that they fall into one of these patterns where they're they're good at making money, but then they lose it, and, and or, or maybe they're just struggling to make it. How do you overcome these limiting patterns or these limiting beliefs? You first look at where they came from. So if you if you don't have a history, then you look at your own life. What was happening to me at the time? When did it start for me? What was happening in my life at the time? What did I, I tell myself about money? What did I make it mean about me? And what did I make it mean about others? And what am I convinced is, is the truth around money? Because here's what we do. We tell ourselves something and then the body believes it. And the minute the brain tells the body a story that the body can believe, that's the truth. Except it's not. It's just your truth. And the good news is you can change it anytime you want to. So let's suppose you're, you're the person who makes it and loses it. I want to know who in your family first did that, who made a whole lot of money and then it went. Because what you're doing is very often we then exclude the event or we exclude the person. And when we do that, your family system or systems don't like it. They keep looking for the exclusion and they keep, so they keep repeating the pattern because they're trying to show you, hey, that was important. There was a loss of money there. Pay attention. Don't exclude it. Look at what happened. If you don't look, you're going to repeat it. If you do look, you're going to mine the wisdom. And so what I do is I show people how to look and how to see what was happening. And then we start to work with the language and rewire the brain and rewire the heart and rewire the gut. Because when those three are, are aligned, you achieve a state of coherence. Now the, now the brain's going, this is the money story and the heart's going, that's right. And the gut goes, we're on. 
and off you go. And when you've got that alignment, that's when you start to rock and roll with money. That's when you're not resisting and, and pushing it away. And we don't even realize we're doing it. I have a my favorite story about that is my own. Um, I went to went to a casino. Young, a, a young married couple could really have done with the money, but very much into the whole honor and the ethics because that's what I was raised with. And I put three, I held two cups of coins, mine and my mother-in-law's, put three coins in, hit the jackpot. And it, it wasn't huge, but I hit the jackpot. And I thought, yes. And then I, re, I got this cold, icy feeling. And I'd taken the coins out of hers by mistake. So any doofus would have taken the three coins and put them back, not me. I'm thinking honor, ethics, and the whole nine yards. And I go over to her and I say, hey, this is what happened. So I guess the jackpot belongs to you. And she says, thank you, and takes it. So now most people would say, she's horrible. Uh -uh. She had a really good relationship with money, and she didn't mind. Money tried everything to play with me, and I just was all about the ethics, the honor. And that meant if I was ethical and honorable, money couldn't be there too. It took me a long while to realize that money was being excluded as part of the ethics and the honor. Interesting. Yeah, yeah that's a, that is, to me, a great story. Uh, somebody who has a great relationship with money, has a, an abundance mindset, you offered, okay, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it would have been different if she would have said something horrible, like I deserve it and you don't. Okay, that's horrible. But you offered just like the universe offers us, right? Here you that go. Means. And we oh, can yeah. say yes or no. And she said yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. And in fact, it took me going on a money walk to finally reconcile with money and realize that I'd loved money since I was a little kid. I'd seen seeds on the ground and figured out that if you pick those up and if I pick it up, I picked them up and gave them to mom, she could plant them and we'd get even more seeds and even more seeds. So I had a knowing of the currency, but it was when I bought into the growing up meta mindset, which is it's evil, it's dark, don't go after it. You've got to go only for the big sort of, and I can remember thinking, and you, I know there are many of your listeners who will, who will laugh at this, but I can remember as a kid, the plate coming down the aisle, the collection plate, and I want to make change. And they said, no, you can't make change. I was like, but if I always have to give this one of these days, I'm going to need that. So, yeah, we really don't teach good money mindset. Money is itching for, for everybody out there to say, come on, money, let's go play. Because it will play with you. I love that idea of money wants to come play with us or with you. And, you know, it's something interesting. I remember uh, in, in elementary school, junior high, I remember my teacher saying, uh, this will help you. We were talking, it was a math class, and she was talking about balancing your checkbook. And even back then, I just thought it was interesting that she was talking about balancing a checkbook, but we never balanced the checkbook. We were never, you know, we never actually experienced that, which I thought would have been a much better uh, use of that example. And yeah, and so, uh, so, so in, in the introduction, I talk about. I talk about uh, you being a systemic worker and constellations expert. What is that? Okay, so systemic work and constellations. Systemic work is the study of you within a system. In other words, you, Bert, did not just happen. You're the result of many, 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 many generations who all have come down and here you are. So it's the study of, of the, all of those generations because every single one of those generations contains clues, words, sentences, thoughts, feelings that belong to you. And the, the, the not nice ones, people always go, oh, you know, the, the, the sins of the father. No, it's not. It's the hidden clues of the father. All of those not nice ones that are coming down to you are saying to you, hey, Bert, do you want to change this? because we're waiting for a change agent. Are you the change agent? So they're actually gifts. They're never curses. They're gifts. Even the ugliest looking things are waiting for you to take them and turn them around and make them something incredible. 
because that's what they want. It reminds me of something that I believe it was Tony Robbins. Um, and he said something. And if it's not Tony Robbins, you guys can correct me, but I believe it was Tony Robbins. He said, life is not happening to you. It's happening, it's happening for, you. for you. Yes. And yes. I, yes. And I think that is such a deep philosophical, magical, you know, mystery revealing way of thinking, right? Talk about that should be taught in elementary, junior high, high school, you know, at least your first year of college, because that is an incredible way to look at life. And it, it, it to me, it, 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 uh, it, dub, it duck, dovetails right into what you're talking about, that these are not what do you call it? Uh, they're not you, curses or limitations. They're not curses. Yes, they they're are not, clues. Yeah, they're all clues. Everything is a clue. So the universe is always in service of you. It always was. It always will be. So that's systemic work. A constellation is a, it's an amazing thing. It's a breakthrough kind of 3D thing. So what happens is you come along and you say to me, you know what, I'm, I always struggle with money. And I say to you, okay, tell me about your mom. Tell me about your dad. So we can get a sense of where that particular struggle may come from. And then I say to you, okay, I want you to pick someone for you, someone for your mom, someone for your dad, and someone for money, maybe. And um, I want you to place them for me the way that it is for you. So what you do is you place them in relationship to each other the way that it's always been for you. Maybe we've got money off to one side and the three of you looking at it, or maybe we've got money sort of hanging around mom, but dad's distant from it. So now I begin to ask you questions about that. What what happened to dad? Why is he off in the distance? And what's happening with mom? Well, well, mom's always been great with money. Money likes mom. And mom likes money. Okay, so that's why those two are together. Well, where are you? Eh? I'm sort of between the two. Now, because you're doing it in 3D, you're taking it out of here. You're placing it in front of you. And you're getting to experience that whole piece that goes on in your mind live. And you're hearing it, you're seeing it, you're touching it. It means you're having a multi-sensory experience of what goes on in your head. And because it's multi-sensory and it, it becomes an embodied experience, you start to rewire your brain very, very quickly. Because what happens is, you know those moments in time where something significant happens and your head, your heart, and your gut are all synced. I mean, it could be traumatic or it could be amazing, but it's like, Boom, and this happens. Well, this is what happens in a constellation. And suddenly everything starts to rewire and change. And you look at that and go, well, hold on. I don't I don't want to be loyal to dad's struggle. Mom, I've got the DNA of success from you as well. I really want that too. Dad, for you who couldn't do it, watch me. What? And so we, we start to work with your language. So now you, you begin to develop that different mindset which then begins to develop that different money set and you're off to a very, very different place. And we don't realize how capable we are of rewiring our lives, not just our brains, our lives. Because now what's happening is you're no longer living or reliving someone else's ancient history. You're fully present and your, your future is no longer the absolute probability you thought it would be now it's about to become something very very different yeah i love that i love that you know uh one of one of the great things that uh that i've enjoyed having a podcast is i, I, I had a chance to meet a lot of people and and some of these people have become friends and, and some of these friends are extremely high achievers and what's the, the number one thing I've learned from these high achievers is thinking big. Yes. And you get, yeah. And you get around somebody who's a big thinker and you realize how much more, how much more growing I have to do. Right. I'm like, I thought I was thinking big. And then you get around a real achiever, somebody who's really comfortable being abundant and thinking big. And, and it's just amazing. And, and that is, I think, the biggest thing that I've noticed from people who struggle to achieve anything and people who just make it make it 
look so easy is that they are they're they're not held back uh, by some of this uh, baggage that maybe they've had that they had at one point, or maybe because uh, because of their environment they never really had it. Uh, but that's the number one thing that that gets me around some of these very successful people is that they are big thinkers that they know not it's that possible. They, know, they know it's possible on my website. If you have a look, the first thing that you'll see is how big are you willing to be? Oh, I like it's, that. It's all about you. The bigger you're willing to be, the more you're going to achieve. You cannot not achieve if you're willing to be big. And yes, it's about choosing your purpose and totally believing it all the way into to reality. That's what it is. I love that. What a great question to ask yourself every day. How big are you willing to be? That is that is a great question. What a great way to start a day. Because it automatically makes you play a little bit bigger. I love that. What a great idea. It does. And I'll tell you the other thing, um, because you spoke about magic earlier on. Um, magic is one of my very core values. Because if you understand magic, the magic of the soul, the magic that's out there, it's really important. So every day before I walk out my uh, out of my bedroom, I have a Siamese cat and, and she's she's beautiful. So I'll turn to the Siamese cat and she always wants a kiss on the head. And I say to her, okay, let's go make a little magic. I love that. I love that. All right. So let's circle back. What are some other myths that you think hold people back? Either or. You can either have love or money. You gotcha. can't have both. Ha, ah, come on, guys. That's not true. So love or money, kindness or money, ethics or money. No, not true. There's a there's a gentleman in he at one point he was uh, the richest man in India and he said it's entirely possible to have a full heart and a full pocket. So that's the biggest one to bust is or the the big two are uh, love of money is the root of all evil, not true and it's an either or. It is not an either or. Money is an and. And money is flow. So that's one. And then then just the idea of, well, I'm not good enough, didn't work hard enough, don't have enough degrees, uh, didn't shine enough, didn't pop enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. Not true. Not true. When you trash talk yourself, anytime money comes near, you're going to go, not good enough, not, 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 not. And money's going to go, oh, good Lord, let me go somewhere else. So don't do that. But when, when you are good enough, when you agree you're good enough, when you're smart enough, when you go out and do enough, when you show up for money, money will show up for you. And something that's really important uh, in terms of myths, money is not a commodity. It is a relationship. Wow. I love that. Money is not a commodity. It's a relationship. That is another great uh, knowledge bomb there, as they call it. That is awesome, which is true. I mean, when you think about what you just said, life is not a commodity. Life is a relationship. When you have a when you start with yourself, if you have a good relationship with yourself, your life is magical. When you have a good relationship with your spouse, life is magical. When you know, and so you can apply that to so many things. I love that idea, but Again, so we're talking about money and abundance today. I, I love to focus on that and just realize everybody listening that money is not a commodity. It's a relationship. Again, we, we've seen some people that have lost it all, quote, lost it all. And then within a year or two, they have it all back. Plus. Yes, because they know that they can flow it. They've taken the steps. They know the mindset that got them there and they know the mindset that that tanked them. Although some people don't. If they don't become aware of the patterns, they can do that over and over. So you get feast and famine, feast and famine. So you've got to be prepared to change that at a very fundamental level. It's super important. Yes, I love that. All right. So how? Uh, what about some practical tips on how to adopt a money or abundance mindset and allow yourself to start exploring opportunities that maybe previously have gone unnoticed. Okay. So first of all, you, you want to sit down and you want to write down everything that you think about money. 
and then start challenging it. Where did it come from? Where did it start for me? What was happening in my life at the time? What did I make it mean about me? Is anybody else in my family, does anybody else have a similar pattern? Hold on. If that's true, I may be borrowing it and it's asking me to change it. How do I want to change it? Practical ways to change it. Um, there was a thing out there for a while. I actually used it in this event that I've just uh, hosted. And it was a 100-day challenge. It's a very smart thing if people understand what they're doing with it. So you take, I, I gave people a, a book that's got place for business cards and marked it from 1 to 100. And every day, you flip it open and hit one. And whatever your finger hits on, that's the amount of dollars you put in there. By the time you get to day 100, if you've kept on it, you've got $5,050. And you're going to notice very quickly that you suddenly go, I don't need to, to buy that. Oh, no, that, that's expensive. Let me. And you suddenly start to channel it very well. So that was the one. The other one that I like and I tell all my clients to do is you've got to go on a money walk. What is a money walk? So you're going to go somewhere where people can't think there is a loony tune on Big Island or wherever it is. And you're going to go and talk to money and you're going to tell it all your thoughts about money, all your fears, all your wishes and desires. Have a talk to money as a friend. Sit and talk to it and say, you know what? I haven't had an honest conversation with you and I don't know, maybe never. I want to talk to you. Here are my fears. Here are my thoughts. Here are my wishes. Here are my desires. And then, okay, money, how can I show up better for you? And how can I ask you to show up for me? And then listen. And I tell my people, my clients to do that. And I've had big bankers I've told to do that. And they go, okay, now that's cheesy. And I said, just do it. I want you to do that. And when you get up every morning, I want you to say, thank you, money, because of you, I can switch on the light. I can have a hot bath. I can, and just start noticing. And they all come back to me and they say, you know, since I've been doing that, things just flow better. I'm aware of what I'm doing and I'm aware of when I'm saying no, because we're often not aware of the subtle ways we're saying no. Bert, come with me for lunch. Oh, don't worry about it. You just turn down money. Hey, can I take you to the movies? No, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You just turn down money. Money's trying to play with you and you're going, it's fine. It's fine. Well, how do you expect it's going to come play with you if you keep closing all the doors all the time? It's going, give me a break here. I can't even get Santa Claus space. So funny uh, what you just said. One of the things that, uh, that happened to me, this is before COVID, because I've worked from home for many, many years, uh, probably 20 plus years. And I live in a small town, uh, Gilbert, Arizona, for the most part. Everything with, is within five minutes of where I live. My gym is five minutes away. My grocery store is three minutes away. I can walk to it if I want. A uh, movie is a couple of minutes away. Everything is within a five, ten minutes at the most, one uh, this one year, I decided, you know what? I, I am so comfortable in my little Gilbert town um, uh, that when I get invited to go to some place like Phoenix or Scottsdale, I, I turn it down because it's it's 20, 30 minutes away. I have to get in the car. I have to deal with traffic, all that other stuff. But so one year I decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to break out of this rut, this comfort zone that I put myself in. And I started attending uh, a uh, marketing uh, networking type of business group thing. And uh, it was in Scottsdale. So it's like a 25 minute drive one way. Started going there. I think within three months, I had picked up four new clients that I never would have picked up. And one of those clients, one of those clients has been with me now going on four years. Another client has been stayed with me for three years. To your point, we talk ourselves out of money because we immediately say no to opportunities because they're out of our comfort zone. Exactly. We don't. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. So what you've just uh, what you've just popped into there are we have bandwidths. We have money bandwidths, and those are also generational. 
You shouldn't want more than your mother. You shouldn't want more than your father. Don't be too greedy. Do you, should, you know what? Everybody gets paid this amount. La, 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 la. So there are bandwidths and we lock into the bandwidths. One of my other ones that happened to me was um, in Houston, good old Houston. Yeah, they asked me to to, to tender for a, a, a quote for coaching because I'm an executive coach as well. This was way back in the beginning. So I tended the thing and they say to me, oh, yeah, oh, ne never mind. And I said, did I, did I ask too much? And the lady said to me, no, you asked so little that we realized you probably weren't a major league coach. Wow. Yeah. That was, that was followed up a week later by somebody calling me and saying, hey, we want you to coach so-and-so. He's one of the top executives, uh, but we don't want to pay uh, – X amount that the other one's been charging us. Well, X amount was about eight times what I'd been charging. I nearly fell off my chair. So, no, that's fine. I think I can come in under that. And I got up and I went, whoa. So the next thing you need to be aware of is, do you undercharge? Because a lot of, lot of people will undercharge for services because they're being kind and ethical. Here's a story that caps it all. If you walk into a surgeon's office, and you say, ouch, I've got a pain in the side. This really hurts. And the surgeon looks at you and says, you know what? I think we can help you. Um, why don't we sort of think about scheduling you and next week? And I think it's your appendix. We'll take it out and I'll charge you five bucks. Are you going to that person? I'm not. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> absolutely. And, and you bring up something that uh, I would say you're absolutely right. 80% of entrepreneurs are char are undercharging. And what I found is most entrepreneurs that are undercharging are playing small. In other words, they are solo entrepreneurs. Maybe, maybe they've expanded to the point where they have a admin. And, and that, that's basically it. It's just one, it's, it's a two man operation or a man and a half operation. But to your point, they, they are, undervaluing themselves because whatever reason they, they're 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 trying to play the walmart game they don't value their services they they have a, a money hang up one of the things that that always cracks me up is when i come in and i'll do some marketing we'll, we'll do a marketing test where we first thing we do is we increase the price when they see people that are signing up for the new price it does change their mindset immediately and, and it, what the, the old adage, once the mind is expanded, it can't contract or something like that. Right. But that works with our money. We, we think that, you know, we, we're playing small. We're in this in this fetal position. And then we need sometimes a coach like yourself to wake us up and say, you're here. But with me, you can be up here. And, and, and this is where you need to be. Unfortunately, sometimes that's what it takes. And that's OK. Of the 20 percent. The ones who are charging correctly, a bunch of them are so frightened by the fact that they are, they won't look at the money. They will not look at the money. I have a number of clients who go, oh, no, I don't look at it. Why not? Well, because, so there it is again. There's the stigma attached to the money. They don't look at it and say, you're awesome. Thank you. What are we going to do with you? So I say to them, so how do you know when you when you got to where it doesn't matter what happens, you're safe? What? Have you looked? No. Would you please go and look for homework? And they come back and go, oh. And then I said to them, so wait, so now I've busted your game because now you know that the stories you're telling yourself are not true. You do have more than enough. You've got plenty. Now, Aladdin, what lamp are you going to rub and what is the genie going to do? Because we're about to go higher. Right. You know, I, there's a great clip. This just happened. Uh, you have Elon Musk uh, telling advertisers to go F themselves if they don't want to advertise on Twitter. Now, uh, several people have said, well, he can say that because he's one of the richest men in the world. And I'm here to tell you that he would have said that if he had if he was starting from zero because he has a very big money mindset number one number two he's got a what i call freedom of relationship and freedom of money meaning he doesn't care whether you stay play or go away he's 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 got his vision and it's huge 
And he's going to go do whatever Elon Musk wants to go do because he believes in himself so much that he, you know, no matter where he's at, he would tell you to F off if you don't like, if you don't want to play with him. He doesn't care. And again, this is what big achievers will do. I don't care whether it's an Elon Musk or a Jeff Bezos, um, anybody who's got that crazy level of self-confidence who have this crazy big vision, they are completely uh, okay with losing a, a relationship or two or five or customers because we live in an abundance world. There's tons of customers and some will play with you and some will not, no matter what you do. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And it's, it's not even the self-confidence, it's the vision. And this is something that I teach a lot. If your purpose, if your goal is, is so exciting to you that you can't resist it, it'll pull you past all of those excuses to stay small. So this is the other thing that people need to know. It's never, I think it was, I'm trying to think who, who it was um, who said this, but he said, it's never that the dream is too big. It's that the dream is too small. And if the dream is too small, it lacks the energy to get you all the way there. That dream has got to have you jumping out of your seat so that you cannot resist yourself. And if the dream is strong enough, you will go all the way there, even though everybody tells you you're a fool. Yes, absolutely. I love that. That is absolutely uh, so true. Uh, bottom line is, again, because so many of us play small. We want to be safe. We don't want to be made fun of. We don't want to fail. All those things. And that causes us to play small. When you look at, again, big achievers, there's tons of failure. Oh, and, and, it's failure all the way up. That's what they oh, know how to do. They know how to fail up. Yes. And uh, again, uh, I like to uh, bring up uh, this this little company called Google. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Google. <laughs> I I think if you look up, if you can, if you want, you can Google how many businesses Google has failed with, and it's like three hundred. They have failed enormous amount of times. Nobody cares. It's still one of the biggest stocks out there. It's still one of the biggest companies out there. Exactly. Uh, you know, and 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 they and they consistently innovate and and they grow and they fail and they grow. I, I love your idea of failing upward because that's really if again back to what we talked about earlier, where life is happening for you and exactly. and, and you and it's not a curse, but a clue. You failed. Great. What did you learn? How will you take that to the next level? What is the next? you know, uh, version of that idea. Right. And, and so, right. uh, it, it's, it's just one of those things. And, and it's scary it when is... you're sitting with nothing in your, your hands, you know what, when we, when we immigrated here, that's what we came with. And it teaches you very quickly. You can either sit down and cry or you can get up and do. Yes. And, and it's, it's funny, you should say immigrate, uh, because, uh, again, I got very. I'm fortunate. We're we're immigrants as well, and 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 um, definitely we were taught. You know, you work hard for what you want, which is great. And, but um, I have noticed since living here uh, in America uh, for fifty plus years, you give me an immigrant who barely speaks English. And he will wipe the floor with the average American entrepreneur who has all this hang up, who has all this fear. And you give me a, a, an immigrant who can barely speak English and they will they will not only work hard, but they, they, they have this clear vision of what they want. And, and, and let me tell you, they get it done time and time and time again. Uh, speaking of Elon Musk, he's an immigrant. Arnold Schwarzenegger, an immigrant. Yep. Uh, you know, the list goes on of how many, uh, when you look at the Fortune 400, there's quite a bit of immigrants on the Fortune 400. There are. I think I think the one thing that's important, though, is people think that the American dream doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it does. It, it does. does. It does. What I think 
maybe sometimes we lose sight of is how incredible this country is. Yes. It's an incredible country. I don't think there's a day that goes by that I'm not grateful that I'm here. I am so grateful that I'm here. What I would wish for would be for everybody to understand that they're in an incredible country and, and to kind of not play small. They've got all the tools they need to be able to grow. They really do. Uh, Absolutely. Very fortunate. Absolutely. And, and I, I saw an article the other day. Um, I'm sorry, it wasn't even an article. It was kind of like a, I don't know, a little quote or something. And I, I had to disagree with it. And the quote was something like, you can't get rich from a salary. And at first, that's kind of rings tr true, right? Because, you know, you're, you may be limited. But what I have found out is that you can. We have a lot of examples of people who become exceedingly wealthy from a salary. Um, the, the, the last CEO of Microsoft did really well. The current CEO of Microsoft is doing pretty good. Uh, th there's several people that have made a killing from a salary but this is what they do. They bring value. They always. bring value. Always. Always. Yes. You give first before you get. And yes. if you bring value, that's what will happen. If you keep adding value, that's what will happen. And you've also got to be smart. This is something that people don't realize about money. If you don't make a plan for money, money is going to just sidle out the door. Make a plan. Be really clear about what you're doing with it. I cannot tell you how many people I said to them, okay, tell me what you do with your money. I don't know. Comes in, goes out. What? No. Talk to it. Make a plan with it. People who make a plan with it will always find a way to pay themselves first. And when you pay yourself first, you start building that wealth. Because now you're talking to money and saying, how can we interact? What can we do together? What more can we do? Talk to me about how you work. All the information you need out there about what to do with money, is it's on it's it's on good old Google. It yes. really is. Start getting smart. The first thing to do is to stop saying money is evil. Well, yes. Stop. And and you know, to I, I think that again, for somebody who may want a little bit of homework, to to your point when you said, you know, start writing down all these thoughts and and, and, and again, maybe some of these words that you're using surrounding money uh, there, you know, I remember for many years, I used to say to myself, I, I just want to, you know, I, I need enough to pay these bills. And wow, what a surprise. Month after month after month, I would always have enough to pay my bills. And but that's when, what's, what's that? And that was it. And that was it. Now, when I back to what you were saying, when I started planning for money, specifically, I want to start saving and investing. I need to do this. And I started thinking again, bigger and 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 opening up to money can do more for me. Guess what? Boom. All of a sudden, my income went from from a month to month struggle to abundance. And before I knew it, I had a bunch of money, a bunch of money to me. In my in my savings and investment accounts, yep. and it was just that simple. And so, again, for our listeners and our viewers, a lot of us struggle because we we affirm that we, we we're chronically it. and we're connected to it, and yes. so we keep uh, affirming the connection. Yes, it's incredible uh, how quickly uh, you know things can change when we again, become aware of what we're thinking, saying, uh, you know, how, the emotions that we connect with money. And so uh, I love your homework. It's a very simple thing to do. And I think that if somebody wants to quickly just open up, do, do what you suggest to do. And uh, Judy, we're almost out of time. So if somebody wants to find out more about you, where can they go to find out more about you and your coaching? Okay, so all of the events and all of the pieces in the book, of course, which is really helpful. Um, Judy Wilkins uh, dash Smith dot com. But that Judy Wilkins dash Smith dot com. Yeah. And the book has got a whole section dedicated to money DNA. And it tells you what to do and how to do it. 
I love it. I love it. Judy, thank you so much for stopping by. 